everyone, Shabby Game here, and welcome to another episode of our Global Cruiserweight Championship Qualifiers. Uh, this one's going to be the United States, or the US, or the American Qualifiers, if you will. As you can see on the screen, our first match is going to be Matt Seidel taking on PJ Black. Now, I'm aware that PJ Black is not American, he's actually South African, but since he is based in America, and he has been for a very long time, we're going to be using him as the Americans. We don't have any South African Qualifiers. I know there is a few out there that have asked to see PJ Black in this universe mode so that's what's going to happen and of course we also got one more match in this episode for you and that is going to be taking place at evolve and that'd be ricochet taking on andrew everett and here we go yeah this first one is taking place at pro wrestling gorilla and um, not the best arena in the world but it, it does the trick doesn't it really still pretty cool either way it's uh, the ring is all we need to see isn't it really of course matt seidel does work for uh for PWG now, it has done for about a year or two. Um, PJ Black yet to make his debut for PWG, but I'm sure he will do at some point in the very, very near future. He's a real PWG style of wrestler, so as long as he's not asking for too much money, which I can't imagine he will be, then I'm sure he'll be booked onto PWG soon as well. This is going to be an interesting one, this. Two former WWE wrestlers, two great high flyers as well. And of course, the winner of this match will go on to our quarterfinals in NXT in a few weeks' time. Of course, if you've not seen them already, we have already done our UK qualifiers. Uh, we saw Will Ospreay and Mark Andrews, and we saw Zack Sabre Jr. and Marty Skull. And also last week we did our Japanese qualifiers, as we saw... So my memory has to kick in now. We saw um, Hayabusa take on Kushida, and we saw Kota Ibushi taking on Jushin Fun the Liger. So definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen those two yet. Um, yeah, they're really, really good matches, especially the Kota Ibushi... Jushin Liger match. That was fantastic. Really worth a watch, that one. Of course, like I've said before, all 16 of the competitors in this competition will be made permanent members of the SmackDown roster once this competition finishes. And of course, whoever wins this competition will be crowned our first Cruiserweight Champion for the SmackDown brand as well. So, a lot is riding on this competition. All these guys will be so eager to get all the way to the end and of course become that first ever Cruiserweight Champion. And guys like his, like uh, Matt Seidel and... Justin Gabriel, of course, both got Justin Gabriel, or Matt Seidel and PJ Black, or Evan Bourne and Justin Gabriel, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they're both looking to try and make amends here. Both had decent careers with the WWE and were both released for, for different reasons, of course. I think I think Justin Gabriel just wasn't getting enough time on the telly, and I don't think they ever saw much of a use for him in the future. And I think Matt Seidel was released due to... Didn't he, didn't he get done by the... the uh, wellness policy a few times for synthetic cannabis something like that it wasn't i don't think it was a major problem was it really but he, he just enjoyed a little bit of the ganja you know as they do um so yeah it's a bit of an interesting one and you think with someone like justin gabriel or sorry pj black uh if if they would have kept a hold of him if they would have brought in the cruiserweight championship it would have been a perfect place for, for for justin gabriel to be in so it's it's a little bit of a shame it's a little bit of a shame really that um that he was let go, but I think it's it's becoming quite common now, I think, at the moment with WWE, because they've taken on so many really good NXT stars over the last few years, they're going to have to start releasing some of the main roster guys that are not really there, they're just sort of like on the edge of TV, they get a little bit of television, might get like one match every month or something like that, and a little bit of a, a promo or something like that, or it, it's, it's not enough really. And when you think of all the quality they have got in NXT, you can see why these guys are disappearing. But the good thing is that even if they are being released, they've made such a uh, such a lot of improvements in WWE and NXT. They've been taught a hell of a lot of stuff, been taught by some of the best trainers in the world, and not only in uh, in wrestling ability, but promos and also how to work a crowd and things like that. And I think that's a, a really good thing for the indie scene, because when these guys do get released, they end up really strengthening the indie scene. And with the indie scene losing quite a lot of big wrestlers, big names, people like Kevin Owens, people like uh, Sami Zayn, um... People like uh, Austin Aries, I suppose, well, you can class them as an indie because TNA were allowing their, star their stars to work indie. Uh, you got Finn Balor. All these guys have been taken away from the indie scene over the past few years. So for WWE to give back with the likes of Justin Gabriel, Matt Seidel, most recently, of course, Damian Sandow, um, with letting those guys go back out there into the indie scene, it sort of helps strengthen uh, the, the wrestling world as well. And people like Drew Galloway and people like uh, also EC3 or Derek Bateman, who once was. It really has strengthened some of the other companies around America as well. 
Both guys now back up to their feet. Great spin and heel kick there by Matt Seidel. And Justin Gabriel slowly back up to his feet and Seidel probably should be taking more of an advantage of the ground as Gabriel because that's what he can do. He can come back up and catch him with that. And now I, I'm going to have to stop calling I'm just used to calling him Gabriel. I, I've, I've still yet to see much of him as PJ Black. And for me, Gabriel's just start. I'm going to try my hardest now. PJ Black. PJ Black all the way. As Matt Seidel goes up top, is he potentially looking for a... No, I thought he might be going for one of these uh, shooting star presses quite early on, but obviously doesn't think there's enough damage been done as of yet on PJ Black. Of course, PJ Black now working for Lucha Underground, which I haven't watched a lot of, I must admit. Uh, I need to sit down one night and just have a bit of a Lucha Underground binge, because I think I've only... I, I watched all the first series, and now uh, I want to get into the second series, but it's just... Uh, I've not watched any of this. I think I've watched a couple of episodes of the second series, so I'll probably go back and watch the whole thing. But I think they're up to like episode number 10 or 11 now. I've not seen the debut of Matanza or anything like that. So I'll definitely go back and watch that. And I've not watched any NXT since WrestleMania either. So I need to go back and watch that as well. So I've got a lot of wrestling to watch when I get the free time. Lion Salt there by Justin Gabriel. By PJ Black. PJ Black. PJ Black. PJ Black. PJ Black. PJ Black. I can remember this. I can remember this. If you've not heard it, I, I, I recently listened to the Colt Cabana podcast with PJ Black and... It was a really interesting listen, and it, it, it sort of delves a bit more into the backstory of some of these wrestlers and exactly how they got into wrestling and things like that. And the, the PJ Black one was incredibly interesting. He had such a uh, such a, a, a torrid upbringing, really. And uh, obviously did a lot of wrestling as well. Wrestled his first match when I think he said he was like nine years old when he wrestled his first match, which is a bit crazy, really. But yeah, it's definitely worth a listen if you've not heard it before. And I think you can download the podcast off iTunes and that sort of stuff. It's definitely worth it. I, I actually quite enjoy those podcasts. As there we go. There's the pin by Matt Seidel. Only enough for a two count. I believe it's Matt Seidel one half of the current uh, IWGP tag team. No, sorry. The, the junior heavyweight tag team champions over in New Japan, I believe. Alongside uh, Ricochet. And that could be an interesting tag team that we could bring into our universe mode. As there is the shooting star press by Matt Seidel on PJ Black. Referee's very slowed down, but this could be enough. For Seidel to make it through to the quarterfinals. It's not. PJ Black kicks out. And this match still continues on. It was a little bit early in the match to uh, potentially go for that finish maybe. But Seidel thought he had enough there. I just stamping on the arm of, of PJ Black. And I'm getting better at calling PJ Black now. I think I'm just so conscious of getting the name wrong. That I'm just trying so hard to make sure I get it right. Now there is the, the headlock there by Matt Seidel. Masadil, of course, was our first Ring of Honor television champion on our first series of the Universe Mode. Very exciting wrestler, Matt Seidel. And I hope we see, I hope we see him again in WWE. I don't know if we will now. I think he's, uh, I think he's going to do a good job in, in uh, Ring of Honor. A good job in PWG. A good job, of course, over in uh, Japan as well. But I think that's about as much as he's going to do now. I don't think he's ever going to be sort of uh, that sort of level the WWE needs taken back on again as there's the pin by PJ Black and in for the two count remember I think guys like Drew Galloway and EC3 I think potentially will go back to the back to the WWE people like uh, Matt Seidel people like uh, PJ Black I don't know if they ever will Damien Sandow I can see Sandow uh, two years on the indie scene I think that Sandow will probably end up at TNA um, I think he would be a, a, a cracking wrestler for TNA to have and I think he would be fast-tracked up to the TNA Heavyweight Championship. I really think that's a, a, a something that T TNA cannot um, mess up. They have to do that. German suplex off the top by Seidel. He hooks his legs to hold on. Does he potentially have another? No, it's a Phoenix. This wasn't really a Phoenix splash. More of a Phoenix sent on. Corkscrew sent on. And it's still not enough to keep PJ Black down. Yeah, I think Sandow, if you give him a couple of years over at TNA, potentially TNA World Champion, no reason why not because he's, he's a incredible wrestler fantastic uh, in ring ability fantastic uh, charisma as well he's really good the whole package and I think if he does that and proves himself then WWE might take him back that's if he wants to go back that is I still can't believe WWE let him go in the first place because he just had such a, a strong fan base he did so well whatever they asked him to do standing Spanish fly there by Matt Seidel and again he's going to go in for the pin and surely PJ Black can't keep kicking out of these and he doesn't there we go Matt Seidel picks up the victory. He is going through to the quarterfinals of the Global Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, of course, that's going to be NXT in a few weeks' time. Just to prove what he can do, he's the fifth person now to qualify for those NXT quarterfinals. And uh, 
I think he's going to be a very strong, strong competitor going forward for that Cruiserweight Championship as well. Of course, we do still have one more match for you left in this episode, so be sure to keep an eye on that. That's going to be Ricochet versus Andrew Everett at the Evolve Arena. But Matt Seidel here really dominated from start to finish. I don't think it ever looked likely that PJ Black was going to pull back into this one. There was a standing moonsault by Seidel. That wasn't enough. And this is when Sidel went for... Was this the shooting star press? Or well, the airboard it used to be called, wasn't it? I don't think, I don't think it calls it that anymore, obviously, because it's not Evan Board anymore. And again, that was only enough for a two count. And then uh, I think Gabriel sort of bugged out here and just got stuck walking backwards. And Sidel catches him straight away with that standing Spanish fly. And that was just enough to finish the guy off. So there is your victor, Matt Sidel. He is going on to the quarterfinals in NXT in a few weeks' time, knowing he's only three victories away from becoming the Cruiserweight champion now. It's just that close. It's within a, it's within a hand's length. Hand's length? It's within a hand's... Reach, hands, grip, I don't, I don't know. But there's a lot of very difficult people he needs to get past first. And here is match number two, as promised. It's going to be Ricochet taking on Andrew Everett. The winner of this one will be joining Matt Seidel at the NXT quarterfinals of the Global Cruiserweight Championship. And here we go. And this is the complete exact same arena, isn't it? They've just got the Evolve logo. <laughs> That's good. Anyway... It doesn't really. We're not trying to keep ultra realistic with this because the fan size is obviously a lot bigger than what it would be for a normal Evolve show. But still, here you get the right effect, and here he comes. It's Ricochet. In my mind, probably one of the top two wrestlers in the world. One of my, one of my two favourite wrestlers in the world, of course, alongside Zack Sabre Jr. These two guys are incredible. And this man here, if he does not end up in the WWE in the next couple of years, there's something seriously, seriously wrong going on. This guy is exactly what the WWE want. He's an absolutely incredible wrestler, a great high flyer. He's good on the mic. He's got a lot of strength as well as that agility as well. Some of the stuff you see him pull off is incredible. And I really think he deserves the opportunity. And of course, currently dominating uh, Lucha Underground as Prince Puma as well. Former Best of the Super Juniors winner over in New Japan. Former... Uh, the Battle Los Angeles winner for Pro Wrestling Gorilla as well. He's just incredible, this guy is. Really is. And of course, he's now going to be facing off against another guy who's really uh, been coming up to the heights of, of high-flying wrestling as well. Somebody who I think has actually joined TNA. I don't know if he's locked into TNA or not, but he's joined TNA alongside Trevor Lee. He's done a lot of work with Trevor Lee as well in some of the smaller companies in America. And that guy, of course, is this guy right here. There he is, Andrew Everett. Really good wrestler, Andrew Everett, and uh, this is going to be an incredible high-flying match. Both these guys are capable of the absolute impossible. It's just incredible what these two guys do. Unfortunately for Andrew Everett, he made his debut for um, he made his debut for PWG, and then he got injured very, very close after that. And it was over a year before he made his second appearance. But ever since then, he's just been an absolute mainstay at, at PWG. He's an absolutely incredible, incredible wrestler. And unfortunately, he's got a crap entrance. S-A-W-F-T. Soft. Yeah, I don't know why that's on there for. Um, yeah. And he steps over the top rope as well. That's just a... I'll add him to the list of entrances I need to replace. Because, of course, both these guys will be permanently joining our SmackDown roster straight after this competition as well anyway. As Ricochet takes on Andrew Everett for a place in the quarterfinals of the Global Cruiserweight Championship. Of course, we still have one more set of qualifiers to come for you next week. That is going to be the Mexican qualifiers. We're going to be seeing a match over at AAA and a match over at Lucha Underground as well. Um, I can probably tell you who's going to be in that one. That's going to be Phoenix, uh, Drago, Pentagon, and Jack Evans. Same as what we said earlier on with, uh, with Justin Gabriel. Jack Evans is based in Mexico and he has been now for about 10 years or so so that's why we're classing him as one of our Mexican qualifiers he works permanently in Mexico for AAA and of course he works for Lucha Underground as well so I'm classing him 
as Mexican, even though he's not Mexican. Well, he probably has got Mexican nationality now. He's lived there for so long. Ricochet now bringing Andrew Everett into the middle of the ring. And a big kick to the back of the head. And so far, Ricochet is dominating this match. Now bringing Everett back up to his feet. Spins him round. Reverse Horika Rana. Ricochet slamming Everett into the mat. And that's dangerous, that is. And that could be a match-ending move by Ricochet. But Everett's still stirring. Slowly back up onto his feet. And Ricochet's there to catch him. Front chancery in. Andrew Everett reverses with that Russian leg sweep. And now Everett locking in a camel clutch. Bit of a strange move for Everett to lock in, but obviously trying to ground Ricochet. Because that's the same sort of thing you can do. Both these guys have a very similar type of offense. So not only are they going to be looking to, uh, to keep themselves high flying, but you need to try and ground your opponent as well. Ricochet now front chancery on oh, Everett and knee to the face as well. Yes, yeah, so you might see certain moves actually going for the legs and trying to damage things like that. And that's going to reduce the amount of high flying springboard maneuvers that your opponent can pull off. But at the moment, Ricochet is looking like a cert to win this match. He's absolutely dominating. And I'm so good we finally got a good Ricochet in this game. Because last year, I don't think the Ricochet was fantastic. But um, there's some guys out there on the PlayStation Community Creations. I think they're... I think it's Lil Dicky, I think, is one of them. And uh, Chaddy Issues, I think, is the other one. Makes absolutely incredible, incredible indie cores. And that's, I think, this a Ricochet one is one of the Chaddy Issue ones. Oh, big move there by Andrew Everett. Just bringing Ricochet down across his knee. Back of the back of the head and the, the upper back as well. Doing some danger to it. Ricochet now with a pin. One, two. It's only a two count. And of course, the uh, I don't know I've mentioned this a few of my videos now, but the the sort of a deal that NXT and well WWE in general and Evolve have is very is very interesting at the moment to me. Uh, it looks like they're uh, it looks like of course NXT are helping Evolve out with a lot of free sort of uh, well, free sort of uh, advertising, and they're talking about them quite a lot as well. And I think Evolve from that have started to pull in some of the biggest audiences they ever have. And also they've allowed certain guys like um, Sami Zayn to go down there and do uh, appearances. And of course, Willie Regal's down there as well. Triple H is down there as well. So th there is a real sort of combination there. And rumour has it that now Evolve are only booking talents that WWE are interested in signing. So a few of the mainstay Evolve guys that have been there for years upon years upon years have now been pushed to one side and they're not getting booked anymore. But everyone else who's now on the Evolve card are people that WWE have their eye on. That's very interesting to me. Because uh, I believe that Marty Skull is now the Marty Skull is now the number one contender for the Evolve Championship. Uh, Drew Galloway is one of the big guys over at Evolve as well, and recently made his return, well, basically made his debut in Evolve was EC3, and he made a very anti WWE promo, which interests me. And it looks like it's going to be EC3 and Drew Galloway teaming up as basically Team TNA um, against the other guys at Evolve, and that's an interesting one because if that is the case, where they are sort of booking potential WWE signings. And having having EC3 and Drew Galloway working together to do an anti-WWE promo makes you wonder whether there is a potential TNA invasion to WWE. When you've got people like Bobby Roode, people like EC3, um, people like Drew Galloway, people like um, Eric Young, Austin Aries, all these sort of guys could potentially be some sort of uh, invasion. And there is rumours that TNA is up for sale if WWE was to consider doing that. They, they would have some uh, interesting ideas of what they could go ahead with as Ricochet goes up onto the top rope. And what is he lining up for here? Whoa, that was a hell of a reversal there by Andrew Everett. Ricochet looked to be going for that somersault Horikarana, but Everett managed to catch him and drop him into a powerball. I had to take a few seconds there to figure out what was going on. Falcon Arrow by Andrew Everett. Now Everett goes up top and... What a scout this would be for Everett if he could pull this off. There's a shooting star press. I think he actually flattened Ricochet's midsection there for a second. Oh, and it was close. It was only a two count. Wow, that was very, very close. Everett now sending Ricochet into the corner. Sending him into the far corner as well. 
And there's a big clothesline. Everett went for the kick to the gut of Ricochet, but Ricochet is back up and caught Everett with that dragon screw. Now Ricochet just showing off with that backflip. That backflip had nothing to do with the match at all. That's just a way for him to show exactly what he can do. And there's the ace crusher by Ricochet bringing Andre Everett straight back up to his feet. Takes him into that seated position now, just locking in that reverse chin lock. Sort of uh, just slowing the pace of the match down, probably trying to regain a little bit of energy as Everett with the elbows. Now taking Ricochet up onto his shoulders. Looking for some sort of razor's edge near. No, Ricochet breaks free and into a neck breaker. In for the pin goes Ricochet. We know Ricochet likes to use that, that 680 cent on, doesn't he? But he's not an opportunity as of yet to lock that one in. As both guys slowly back up to their feet once again. Everett now spinning Ricochet round, dropping him into the backdrop. And now Everett's showing off as well. A belly to back slam, sort of a collegiate style wrestling move there by Andrew Everett. Showed he's not just all about the flips. Everett now sending Ricochet into the corner. Everett taking a little bit of time to, to look at what he's doing, but it doesn't seem to have affected too much. I thought Ricochet might have had a chance there to get back into this one, but it doesn't seem like it. As Everett parking Ricochet on that top rope and Ricochet kicks himself free. That's a dangerous position for Everett to be in. I'm not quite sure who came out on top on that one. I'm, I've got a feel that was one of Ricochet's moves, but at the same time, I think uh, I think he might not have hit it as much as he was hoping as both these guys back up on their knees. Everett spinning Ricochet around, spins him back around as well, just making him dizzy now. Belly to belly slam. Standing shooting star press by Everett as well. And drops into the pin. Is that going to be enough? This will be a major win for Everett if it is. He's done it. He has done it. Well done, Andrew Everett. Ricochet unbelievably knocked out in the first round of these Global Cruiserweight Championship qualifiers. That has stunned me, that has. I was not expecting that at all. Well done to, to uh, Andrew Everett. He really put in a, a, a great, great shift here. And there was a few occasions where I thought Ricochet could have had this one won. There's that falcon arrow by Andrew Everett. And he followed it up with his shooting star press. Where he actually went through Ricochet's body, I think. It was that good of a... Shooting staff as he went completely through the body. But again, that was not enough for the free count. There was that potential razor's edge, which Ricochet managed to slide his way out of into the neck breaker. And he went for the pin straight from that. Be interesting to see what, what actually happened with that move by Ricochet. Did he, the one where he dived off the top rope, I'm not quite sure if he, if he actually hit it the way he meant to. It was a belly-to-belly -belly slam by Andrew Everett. And he went straight into the pin. And I'm surprised that was enough. Obviously, the damage all put together was enough to, to keep Ricochet down. So well done to Andrew Everett. He is joining Matt Seidel in the NXT quarterfinals. Of course, that's not the last we've seen of Ricochet or um, PJ Black. Both of those guys will be joining the SmackDown roster at the end of this competition. So, uh, yeah, Matt Seidel, Andrew Everett into the quarterfinals, potentially going forward to become the first Cruiserweight champion on SmackDown. And, of course, we have one more set of qualifiers to come for you next week, which will be the Mexican qualifiers. So keep an eye out for that. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do hit the like button. It does really help me out. And, of course, if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe for a lot more of this WWE Universe mode. And, of course, the Global Cruiserweight Championship. I've been Chevy Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. And I shall see you all next week for our final set of qualifiers. Mm -hmm.